record and I'll upload this later on. All right, let's get started. So today I am going to show you how to create a talking character avatar in OBS using only one free plugin. If you've watched my previous video on this, it wasn't very good. I rambled for a lot. Uh, and it required two plugins. This one is better because it only uses one. And there's a few more tricks I've learned along the way that make it a bit easier uh, and a bit more flexible. So it, it should be better all around and hopefully shorter. Uh, so the character I have today is Kluber, dear friend of Simon Honeydew, and art again done by Shugamochi. Both of their links will be down below if you want to go check them out. Um, and and I'm again, it's built up from uh, just a, a couple of very nicely drawn images and the audio move plugin. So let's take a look at what's gone into that. First thing you'll notice is I have an, a, a scene in here. I have a scene source. It's one nice big element, easy to resize, move around. Uh, I should be able to transform yet and I can flip and I can do whatever with this uh, on my main scene. So this would be, you know, where I'd also have my video, game, whatever else is going on. Uh, and by having the entire scene added in rather than each individual element, it's really easy to move stuff around. So this means that I'll have another scene which does have all of the individual elements and it's a bit more complex. So that's the first thing that we've done to set this up differently. Uh, and I'll come back at the end and, and show you a, another nice thing about doing it in the scene. Uh, in this scene, we have all of the individual parts again. Mouth, there's three mouth animations in this. The eyes is just like a, a what is it? A, 10 second long gif that blinks every now and then uh, and then the overall main part of the picture and a mic input. Now this is not the mic input that you would have for actually going out to the stream. You wouldn't record this, you wouldn't play, you, no one should ever hear this. Uh, but it is important for controlling how all, all of this looks. It gets some filters on it that drive the rest of the animation and so it's going to be an important part of it. So. Let's start from scratch and create this talking Kluber again. I have all the individual elements here, all kind of separated out. And the first thing I'm going to do is get them all layered properly on top of each other. Now, the nice thing here is they've been drawn so that they are all the same size image and they all overlay to the right position. So I can come to the main part, go to transform, copy transform, and just go through each element and paste and it's going to move it to the right place for me. Now I want to go through the elements. These are already in the right order, uh, but if I didn't have kind of the biggest frame on top, then I'd want to reorder these around. So you can see if I put these in the reverse order, it looks weird. You can see three sets of lips at once. It makes things so much easier if these uh, layer on top of each other cleanly like this. It is possible to make them hide again if you don't have kind of perfect overlaying, but it makes things so much easier if they do. So if you can do that, it's worth having it set up with kind of a complete overlay. Now I have all of these elements here. I'm going to select them all and right click and say group selected items. Uh, I'll just call that group. This puts them all inside one thing here, which we'll see later on is really helpful. And, and, and I'm just going to leave that there for now. Now, for the two frames that we're going to hide, so when I hide the two mouth opens, then we see the mouth is closed. That's kind of our default position. So these two elements, I want to go through each one, right click filters and add a color correction filter. This is just the standard built in one and set the opacity to zero. So that makes it invisible. And I'll do the same thing on the part open. And that one's also invisible. So now we have the mouth closed. Now we come to the mic input. Uh, and, and you know, you probably don't have a mic input here yet, right? You, you'll start off with clean scene, nothing in it. Uh, you may have a global mic, which is the one that you'll be sending to the output, but that's not the one we want here. So we'll be adding a new audio input capture. Uh, in my case, I'm going to add an existing one and clean it up slightly, but you'll probably add a new one, a second copy and set it to the same input as your main mic so that you're getting the same input. Um, I'm quickly just going to clean this up. So ignore those three. Rematrix I'm using just to fix up a stereo thing on my microphone. That's completely separate. That's not part of this, but if you, if you haven't used it, that's great. So clean mic input. 
And this is where we do the magic. So if I bring up the filters for this, then I'm going to add the first audio move, which will show up under the plus. If you've got the move transition installed, this is where it'll be. And this will be mouth open. So the action we want is filter enable. Remember we added that color correct filter to the mouth open image. Color correct. When we enable this, it's going to make it invisible. When we disable it, it will make it invisible. So we want to dis disable over and then set this threshold. And now when my audio goes above the threshold, it's going to disable that filter, make it visible. When it goes below, it's going to enable it again, make it invisible. So, so we can see that. If I turn the easing up, that's just going to slow down the transition. I need to be louder for longer for it to trigger and quieter for longer for it to trigger. So it takes out some of the flickering and you can fiddle with those to your heart con heart's content to make it look the way you want it to look. Because I also have a mouth part open, I'm going to add a, a second one of these. Same action, filter enable. The source in this case will be mouth part open. The filter color correction, same thing. Enable under, disable over. This time the threshold will be a little bit lower and so now I just get a smoother movement as, as I'm speaking because it adds that intermediate frame in the middle. If I set the thresholds higher, then I can have a normal speaking one and a shouting one if I get really loud. There's a lot of flexibility with this setup. If you want to hide something, then you can flip this threshold around and then when you get uh, below a certain level, it's going to hide it rather than the other way around. The last thing I want to do is make her dance a little bit. And for that, I'm going to use one more audio move. I'll call it dance. Uh, this one will be a transform. I'm going to disable it briefly just to make things easier. We're going to transform inside scene two. The source is that group we created and the transform is the rotation. Let's set the factor down to about 10. And so now when I turn this up, you can see she shakes around as I speak. I can adjust the easing to make it a little, little smoother movement. But the weird thing here is she seems to be spinning around the top corner and you can see that when I hover over and you can see the bounding box, that top corner is in fact fixed and she's rotating around it. Maybe that's a look you want. If not, here's how to fix that. I can come to the group, right click on that, transform, edit transform. And you can see the rotation moving as I speak in here. If I change this positional alignment, from top left to, let's say I want bottom center. That's going to move where she's located. But you can see now that this bottom bit is fixed and she's rotating around that, which is a slightly more natural movement. And I'm also going to position this. I'm going to stop talking briefly. Uh, actually, no, and move her slightly off the bottom. So I'm holding down control so it doesn't snap. And this now means you don't see any gap when she wobbles around in there. If I'm done here and come back to my original scene, you can see this one stopped because I disconnected the audio input. Uh, I can come back to my real scene, add a scene, and choose that one that I just created. And now you can see she's added in exactly as she was before, easy to drag around, sits right at the bottom so I can snap that to the bottom of my scene. I can resize and I have the cool talking avatar based on just two, just one plugin. Uh, from OBS. The link for that audio for that move transition plugin will be in the description below. If you're an asset creator for other streamers and you want to share this with them, another plugin that's linked below is the source copy plugin. And what that lets you do is come to this tools menu, which it will have added source copy, and you can save the scene. That'll export all of the settings. You can send those as a file to your to whoever you're working with and they can load the scene in and it will just add a fresh scene to their setup that they can then add into their main scene. So uh, with just one plugin, you get, the, uh, you get the move transition. You can have a talking avatar with a second plugin as an asset designer. You can share that with whoever else you're working with. And hopefully that's all done in less than 20 minutes <laughs> compared to the previous video. Thanks for joining. Uh, check out my Twitch channel if you want to see mostly audio stuff, occasionally more OBS stuff. And yeah, have a good day.